Hello, welcome once again. Um, we were speaking last time actually about about fuses and fuse panels, power distribution. There were a couple of comments that I got that people were a little confused about. Let's let's try to elaborate on that. Um, as you can see over here, this is a block diagram of all the systems and the fuses that are connected. This is in the fuse box that's usually under the hood. As you can see, multi multi systems go to the fuses there are about six or seven other pages which i did not print that also have fuses so before i said a parasitic drawer parasitic drawer is over time you lose voltage to the battery because you are drawing current from the battery over time for example came home from work shut the car off next morning i come in I start the car, obviously no crank, obviously. I look at the gauge on the meter. There's a gauge in your car. It says 11 volts without taking a multimeter out. 11 volts, I said, I'm not going nowhere. Time to call the boss, I'm gonna be in late. First thing that you do is try to boost it. Any booster, this is the booster that I use. This is over, two, as you can see, over 2000 amps. This is the quality boosters that come. These are the best. And these hold the charge for a long time. So therefore, these that you see over here, <clears throat> these that you see over here are one of, the one of the best ones. And always make sure it's fully charged to the green. That tells you it's fully charged. But first thing is first, charge it. After you've done that, now we have a parasitic drawer. The rules are of nowadays vehicles are you cannot disconnect the battery terminals to measure and put a current meter in there. Once you break the circuit, regardless if you're taking the fuse out, regardless of taking the terminals out, you're breaking the circuits. Instead of the modules being asleep, you're being they'll be awake. So you have to do it a different way. For those ways, you can see that I ha have videos on the channel of Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto <clears throat> without disconnecting anything using a clamp meter. Now. Once we find, let's say, we get which place do we go to? And this was the confusion from many comments. Where do we go to measure? Some say, obviously, the negative. Some say the positive with the clamp meter we're talking about, right? Well, the place that I like to go to is at this point right here. This is called the bus wire or the, 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 the heavy, heavy wire. You see this is thicker like we spoke about before. This is thicker drawn than this there's a reason for that this is the main main carrying the total current the total current goes here and it separates to all the branches these are called branches eventually going to the system that it's connected to the other part of the system over here the, the modules whatever it's connected to is a is a ground potential going back to ground which was not shown over here so when we do this i put the clamp meter over here Let's say I measure one amp, which is a little excessive. I know I have a parasitic drawer, not a blown fuse. There were comments that said, what's the difference between a blown fuse and a parasitic drawer? Blown fuse means I'm not, I'm not extracting or drawing current from the battery because the fuse is blown. Parasitic drawer means over time, like the example we gave, I am drawing current from the battery. It's over a while. It's over time. It could be 750 milliamps. It could be one amp. That's excessive. Right away, I have to try to figure out which of these multi-multi systems of these fuses, you could have 50, 60 fuses, is the culprit. As I specified before, I like to start with something that's common. This was, I think, most of the confusion. I look, first thing is for me, I get the schematic. I get the wiring diagram. And you could get the wiring diagram. You don't have to order the whole thing. You could go to Google, put in uh, uh, fuse power distribution for uh, Acura 2016. It happens to be this one. Um, and a page should show up. You don't have to buy the whole thing. Just put it in Google. So I look at this and I say, okay, which is a common fuse? What do I mean by that? Common fuse means, let's say this one. See this multi-purpose fuse over here? This high fuse over here, 125 amps, is connected to, if you go over here, connected to this one, like we said, to all these, 
branches connected to also these branches, these branches, this, this, all of these systems and more. If you go to R, like we said before, R is where? R is on the next page. So this multi-fuse, 125 amps, see the R? Still connected to more. So what do I mean by common? Common means it's connected to multi-systems. So therefore, after I've cl I clarified one problem, I'm, I'm drawing one amp, let's say, in this example. Now I, can, I, have a pro I cannot take out the fuse. You could do that 20 years ago. You cannot do that today. You're resetting the modules. What I do is, and I'll show you in the video, you measure millivolts on a small scale, and you have to make sure you know how to change properly from volts to millivolts. When we measure that, let's say we have 80 millivolts across this one. This is the guilty one. First of all, I'm going to go to the one that's feeding all the systems. I'm not going to go to individual ones. There are too many of them. Chances are, if there's a draw, if there is a draw in one of these systems, I'll pick it up by going to this fuse because this fuse feeds all of them. Remember. So, let's say one amp is being drawn from any one of these modules <clears throat> or the one I showed you on the next page. Let's say there are 25 systems over here going through this. If there's one amp being drawn over here, I put my meter on millivolts if I'm able to, and I measure 80 millivolts. That tells me the problem is related to this. Now, what do I do? Do I take out the fuse? No. You don't take out the fuse. You're going to reset the module. Now you, have a ch now you have another challenge. Now I could go at least to the individual fuses, not pull them out, but measure millivolts across each one. It's better than measuring 50 fuses. At least you got it down to 20 fuses, right? So by doing this, this technique, first getting the wiring diagram, see where the common fuse is where it feeds all, all of them, but do not pull out this one. Keep it in there, measure the voltage drop across a fuse, okay? If it's close to zero millivolts, I don't have to worry. I'm not drawing any current over here. My problem might be one of the other ones. If I am if I'm have 80 millivolts uh, or 90 millivolts, I'm drawing current. That current could be one amp, could be 750 milliamps, whatever it is. One of these are at fault. Then I go and I measure across each one millivolts, millivolts. Do not take out the fuse over here. You'll reset the module. You could do that 20 years ago, not today. So therefore, this is what I wanted to specify first. That's the first thing. How to measure millivolts, I'll show you in the video how to do that. This is part two. Again, thanks for the views. It wasn't that bad. It was better. Hopefully, uh, there's a big interest in this, finding shorts uh, uh, out in, uh, uh, in, in these type of uh, situations. But let's go, to, let's go to this one over here. Okay. Now, let's go maybe. Th we'll be a little better over here. Okay. We were talking about that thick, thick wire, right? <clears throat> that we saw before. Another thick wire over here. This is a thick wire, this is a thick wire. This is a starter motor. The other diagram was an Acura, this is a Honda, same thing. So, as we said over here, a multi-fuse is the high rating fuse that's in your fuse panel. Now, you see this thick wire? Thicker than this, obviously. Thicker than, thicker than these, obviously, right? These are thicker because these, this carries most of the current. This carries a 200 or 300 amps, whatever you need to go to the starter, starter motor. Now, <clears throat> this fuse is connected to this fuse by this wire. So let's think of it as a center tap, like a potentiometer. So that's one terminal that's common to both. This is in a package. There's a reason there's a dotted line around these two fuses. It's in a package. It's one fuse, but there's a center tap in between. The other one goes to this side, and the other one goes to this side. So you can have a center tap, three terminals. One terminal, the common, another terminal, another terminal. That's how they're making it to a package. 
Now, we said over here, <clears throat> we said over here, we go and we set, where's the load? The load is the starter motor. <clears throat> the load is the starter motor in this case. Therefore, we make a line or we try to differentiate this circuit and this is the load. Where do we measure 12 volts? I had this problem when someone made a comment. Where do I measure 12 volts? If you want to measure if everything is working, if, the, if these two fuses are good, and most important, if the ignition switch is good in the start position, what should I get over here? I should get 12 volts over here. That tells me that this ignition switch is good in the start position. I don't have to go and take apart the steering wheel and all that assembly to figure it out. Why? Because I can measure 12 volts over here when I flip this to start position. Then, where's the load? The load is right here. Here's the load. So I start closest to the load. This is 12 volts over here I should get when this is closed, like we went over a couple of times. 12 volts over here. Let's say I don't have 12 volts, like the person had who, sh who told me the comment. Let's say I have zero volts here. What's the next step? I go over here and I say I have 12 volts over here. But look at, this is common to both. That's the problem. Sometimes you have a separate circuit going to this. In this case, see, you have a common going to both. So in other words, if this start uh, ignition switch in the start position is bad, it'll affect both sides of this relay. That's why when someone asks me, how much do I measure in the relay? How much should I measure? It depends. Is this a separate circuit, the load side? Or, it, or is this a common? See, this is the problem. This is common to both. If this is not good, it'll knock out both sides. That's the problem. So unless you get the wiring diagram, you don't know that. You don't know that. That's why I always ex say first, get the wiring diagram before you diagnose to understand what's going on. If you just go to the fuse panel and go to the relay and jump and do whatever you do, you won't, you won't know that. That this is both going to the start to the um, ignition switch. You might think this is going to a fuse. You have to get the wiring diagram. In most cases, in most channels, as you see, they they're diagnosing, and after a while, after diagnosing for the problem, they say, "Let's get the wiring diagram." Why didn't you get the wiring diagram in the first place? It would be much much easier, right? So we go here. Let's say we don't have we have zero volts here. Let's say we go over here. We have zero volts. What does that tell you? This wire could be broken, but also, even worse, the ignition switch is not good. How do I know? I go over here and I measure, I measure at this point at one, two, three, four, four terminals. I measure at this point zero volts, zero volts, zero volts. He's the culprit. Or is he? Let's go over here. What happens if these two open up? If any one of these two open up, what should I get over here? Zero volts. So you can't say right away the ignition switch is the problem. You have to look where it's being fed. So if any one of these open up, guess what? I'm not getting zero volts here, not getting zero volts here, getting zero volts here, getting zero volts here, getting zero here, zero here all around because he, he, he opened up the circuit. If this was good, I would have zero volts here. And what over here? 12 volts. 12 volts here. 12 volts here, but zero volts here. So you have to get the wiring diagram to see what feeds this side and what feeds this side. This, in this one, the common is this one. So like I said before, uh, this is part two. There'll be a few more parts and I'll show you hopefully on the, uh, uh, um, the technique that I have. But first you have to understand, you have to understand the basics of what's going on and how I do these things. You take the power distribution board you to get the wiring diagram once you once you verified confirmed there is a draw you get the wiring diagram and you hit it by let me find a fuse that feeds a lot of the circuits so instead of 40 40 fuses checking 40 fuses or 50 fuses remember there's one under the hood by the engine there's another one under the dashboard too much to go through you try to lessen it you go to somewhere that's a fuse, a common fuse that feeds 
a lot of the systems, like this one over here. If there is a draw, let's say one amp, I put this on millivolts on the uh, multimeter, I will see a draw. I will see 80 millivolts, 100 millivolts, whatever it is, that tells me something over here is, is pulling current from the battery. At least you isolate it to these instead of 40, 50 of them. Okay, you'll, you'll see it hands-on, hopefully. This is part two. Hopefully part three will come. Thanks for watching.